Dear Lord, you are our wonderful creator, the God who is always with us, always protecting us, and always pushing us to be who you created us to be. As we join together to fight the evil of this world, protect us and this podcast today and anyone listening in the future from spirits who wish to divide, bring negativity, or crush the Holy Spirit that lives within us all. Please speak through us today to bring the messages you need others to hear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the Save Our Children podcast. We're your hosts, Becky and Bridget. Today, we get the honor to speak to well-known human trafficking activist, Landon Starbuck. As a mom of three, Landon is one of the big voices out there talking about this difficult topic. She started out as a billboard charting artist who left the business due to learning about exploitation. After doing a bit of research, she discovered that Hollywood was indeed the marketing arm for sexual exploitation. Landon is now the founder and president of Freedom Forever, and we are blessed to have her on our podcast. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. For our listeners who are new to the fight or haven't heard your story before, can you please tell us a bit about your background? How long have you been fighting this battle to save victims of human trafficking? Because I know Bridget and I have only been doing it for a few years, and some days it just feels like we aren't gaining any traction. It, it's definitely a fight. I, I share that fight and, and that struggle. Um, well, first off, thank you so much for having me on. Um, Bridget and Becky, the work you're doing is so important. Please keep doing what you're doing. I know that it's having such an effect um, and you're giving so many survivors and victims still trapped in exploitation a voice. Uh, so I'm just, I'm, I'm so honored to be on your podcast uh, and to be uh, here sharing in this great work that you're doing. Um, so I'm Landon Starbuck. Uh, my story goes back to I guess my childhood is the very beginning, coming from a broken home myself, um, not being armed and equipped with the skills I needed, with the tools I needed for life uh, to not only be able to identify bad things like exploitation, like grooming, but also to have a, a firm sense of identity. And I think it's those two things that are the most um, crucial prevention tools that parents need to have with their kids is that instilling that strong sense of identity into their children and also equipping them with the digital and physical and emotional and spiritual self-defense skills they need to go out. So when I left um, Dallas, Texas, I was uh, a rising star, you know, performing on barrels of hay, uh, performing at the mall. <laughs> um, and I really wanted to be uh, a musician, a singer songwriter. That was my dream. And I think in many ways, uh, that was a, you know, a dream of a child that just wanted that validation. And I found that God gave me this gift to use my voice and I wanted to use it for good, but I really didn't know how to do that. And so it's been a long journey. I moved to LA when I was 18, not knowing anybody, packed my, my car up um, and I, I went to LA and, you know, I discovered a lot of exploitation that I didn't even recognize at the time, a lot of child trafficking happening. Um, but mostly it was a sexual quid pro quo system that happens with females. And while I didn't, you know, actively participate in that, it, I was very naive and I didn't understand what I was experiencing. So I really internalized that back on myself. And I, I, was very depressed because I, it goes back to those childhood wounds of like, I'm not good enough. You know, yeah. if I was just a better singer, if I was just a better writer, if I was just, you know, thinner or prettier, whatever it has to be to be enough. Right. But you, this is what young girls need to understand. The ones who are watching the TV and the screens and social media is you will never be enough for this satanic world because True. they operate in an exchange of exploitation, not about what your identity is on the inside. You could be the kindest, most beautiful person it will never be enough because that they don't operate in that currency and so it took me a long time and so that's that's a really important message that i i really try to get you know to young girls somehow through their mothers through their aunts through their grandmothers is to let them know that that is a lie that whole world and all of the celebrity talking figureheads it's a lie 
And it saves them so much heartache because I wish I hadn't gone through that. I wish I had had somebody, a mentor, a, an older woman to take me under their wing and tell me the truth. I had to experience the hard way. Uh, I had to lose so many things that I worked hard for just because somebody else would go in and be willing to do the things to get to that next level. Um, and, you know, I got labeled hard to work with, which is just a, a phrase they use for women or girls that won't do what they want them to do. Um, and so, you know, it was a very difficult period of my life. Um, and I was dealing with some health struggles too. I, I survived ovarian cancer at 16. And I suppose that gave me oh a God. sense of, you know, resiliency to be able to go and do this battle in, in Hollywood. Because when you have to face your mortality at such a young age, you know, when your brain's not even developed, it, it, it really puts a sense of resiliency is like, you're not scared of anything. You just keep going. And so I, I think that it was those things that are part of my, my identity that, that kept me pushing through and always wanting to know more and, and digging deeper um, because I know how precious and short life is. And so that's really what, what got me on my journey coming through that depression meeting my husband, who's just has been an angel in my life. And I'm just so blessed that God put him in my life. I was able to have three kids with one ovary, you know, after cancer, three miracles. God is so good. Um, and, you know, I was able to take my, my gift and, you know, what I thought was my gift of using my voice to sing and entertain people was actually using my voice in a different way. So I misunderstood God there with, the, <laughs> with my gift of my oh, voice. <laughs> so, but it's just so funny how, how that works. Um, but now I'm, I'm using my voice and I still like to make music, you know, here and there, but, um, you know, I, I love what I do. I love, you know, being able to be a part of that change and, and instilling the truth um, into people's identities deep down so that they don't fall victim to this exploitation culture. Thank you so much for sharing that and being so open and transparent about that. Because me as a mom of a teenage daughter, literally just went through this whole stage of how technology really has taken over the world in this generation, especially with the young teens and TikTok and all those trends. And they don't understand how it's a facade. And what most people don't step back because parents don't want to have to detach from the social media and the phones as well. So people don't realize the mental health effect that it's having on their children. So we often talk about how important it is to raise awareness on these topics and the dark side of technology, because there are benefits to it. I mean, we wouldn't be able to connect to you and all the other amazing survivors and everyone we've connected to, to have these conversations. So thank you for being so transparent, especially as a mom, because that's one thing that I've been trying to teach my daughter just because we don't have a lot of the technology and I don't let her use the social media apps. And so sometimes it's like, actually a majority of the time it backfires on me. And so I love that you are putting that message out there, especially for teenage girls, because right now they're struggling more than ever of trying to find themselves. And with the whole LGBTQ plus all that community and all that agenda being pushed, the kids are so confused. So if I can ask you, what would be some advice for us as parents and anyone listening who works with children when they're just waking up to the reality of grooming and indoctrination and Disney and hypersexualization and all the social media trends, what would be some advice on how to even process it or have these conversations with your children? Wow. Yeah, that's, I mean, there, that's a loaded question because when you wake up to all of this, it is so overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and there's just, it honestly feels like such a, a, a never ending to-do list of things parents have to do to keep their kids safe. It becomes a full-time job. It's unattainable. You know, it's, it's a burnout recipe for burnout. I've sort of changed my approach with this um, because of that, you know, it, it just, it never ends. And here's the thing, like we can focus on, oh, this app and awareness and, you know, we know that it's dangerous and don't do this and don't do this, but then it be, sort of becomes like a diet where you're like, don't do the donut, don't eat right. this, don't eat this. Right. And it's just a negative cycle that kind of perpetuate it. And it puts you in an adversarial relationship. I have a teenager as well, where if you're just telling them what they can't do, 
it, you know, it's just a vicious cycle of don't sin, don't do this. And that doesn't work for any of us. Um, so really it's about, it, it's, you know, I, I talk about like going on a detox and uh, from all these detachments, you know, attachments in our life. And what do they serve? Really unpacking it all with our kids of like, why is this something that is good for us? How, what does it do for us, for our life? Does it bring us together? Does it make us want to be better people? Or is it just mindless entertainment? Or what kind of ideas is it bringing into our home? What about this music? What is this doing? How does it make you feel? Like really being conscious of our experiences and our and our diet of media, our uh, what we're learning in school, our environment, really unpacking it all because we have choices. We get to choose as parents, especially what uh, you know our kids are exposed to, and we have the power. You know, fortunately, we still live in a country free enough where we have choices, even though those are all being threatened right. to, to protect our kids, to do what it takes. So we have this one road of trying to fit in with the world where there's constant concessions and, and you have to do this and you have to get this filter and you got to get this router and you got to do this. And you're going to argue with your kids because the kids at school have it, you know, or we can really be radical <laughs> with this transformative process and say, okay, what am I building here? Who am I raising? You know, what, what do I want them to, to believe about themselves? And, what things are threatening that? What things are not in alignment with what I'm building, right? And yeah. and so that's kind of more, you know, of a more empowering approach um, because if we're just constantly in fear of everything that comes our way, it's just exhausting. And then parents tune out and they just say, you know what, I this is, this is the way it is. Kids are going to be on social media, you know, and their hands go up in the air and then they tune out. And And so the responsibility and power has to be you know, handed back to parents when they realize that they do have the power that, you know, it, it's, it's a different, it's a game changer, you know? No, I, yeah, I love that approach because honestly with us doing our podcast and like my daughter's aware, we have all these conversations, but then it actually did a reverse role for me. So it actually caused rebellion, just like what you're talking about. So then she mm -hmm. actually went behind my back got a phone from a friend, a dummy phone from a friend. And then it started a whole mental health cycle and we had to do a, a whole detox and all of that. So we're still in the process of that. So I love that approach. And I had to learn, unfortunately, the hard way. Yeah. So it actually leads me into one of my questions. Um, Cause I saw you on uh, do an interview with Tommy Laren the other day and you were talking about the whole transgender agenda and and things like that my boys i have a 14 year old boy and a 12 year old boy and they are both at our local public school um and they are very very aware of what's going on and what we stand for and and my theory has always been if I can educate you you can educate your friends or you can keep your friends safer um things like that my older son we had this conversation literally last night so it's kind of divine that we're having this but we had a conversation last night in his he's in the marching band and there are two girls in his band that are I, that are transitioning. I don't know exactly to what extent to where we are. And they're both in the, in percussion with him. And so of course for us, we're like, but they're girls. And he's like, yeah, but they, they're, they want to be boys. And so he, at home, he'll say she, but he even said last night, he's like, I don't want to disrespect them when I'm at school. So I don't want to like not call them what they want to be called. But he also knows that that's not, the world we live in. And, and for me, it was, no, you need to be respectful of other people. And so that's a really hard position for us to be in. Cause again, it could happen anywhere. How do you, how do we address that as parents who are like, no, if you want to be 18 and you want to do that to yourself, that's fine. But at 14, 15, 16, why are you doing that? what's the reason behind it and that's not his position or place to ask and so we kind of just went with the idea that be respectful be loving again love god love others and just be a good a good friend and a good person and there's not i hate to say there's not a lot you can do about it but i don't know that there's anything he at 14 can do well you know i i've thought a lot about this because you know, especially as a Christian, right? Like, right. um, and, and, and it's a lot, you know, it, it's a nuanced thing because 
as Christians, you know, or just, you know, as people listening who aren't believers, you know, as, as good people, we want to not create division. We want to create peace. We want to love our neighbor. We want to be kind. We want to um, be respectful, you know, even if somebody is suffering from any mental illness, right? We, we don't right. want to to uh, demonize or hurt anyone, right? That's not our intention. Right. However, it is very important that we don't make concessions and compromises when it comes to truth. Because where does truth come from and who are we serving? You know, all truth comes from God. You know, it, it, otherwise there is, when you really dig down, like, where does this come from? Where does the belief, why is it wrong to rape a child? It's not because some philosopher said it. It's because it's innately in our DNA because God created us to know that we don't do that to our children. Mothers know to nurture and protect. This is our design. And what's happening is an unraveling of that an attack on that design and that truth fundamental mm-hmm. truth, objective truth, you know, not your truth, my truth. And so when we, we send our kids out into a world, and I'll give you an example. My son really wanted a rock climb. And of course the one rock climbing place that we found, we walk in that the people have their N95s climbing, which seems miserable to me. Um, right. And they have their pronoun tags, right. And they have their rainbow lanyards and all that. And, you know, I, I've, you know, my, my son's nine and I've, we've, we've role played a lot of how, how to deal with these situations because you're going to run into them, right? We can't yeah. insulate them to, you know, where it's going to happen. And so he, we talked about different ways he could handle it. And so when they asked him, Hey, you know, what are your pronouns? Um, he said, you know, I'm sorry, I don't use pronouns. That's it's a social political movement. that's really harmful and resulting in a lot of children being hurt, but I'm happy to call you by your name. What's your name? And so I, I tell my kids use people's names. What is your name? And you know, what is really powerful about that is I really believe our names are unique. You know, the way our parents choose our names and, and, and it taps back into our childhood, our innate sense of knowing that we come from God, that God loves us, right? So when somebody calls you a she or her, you're disconnected from from who you are, right? And yeah. and um, when when your mom said, you know, Becky, I love you, or your your dad said, Bridget, I love you, you know, your name is beautiful, and it's beautiful in the eyes of your parents and God. And so I want to call people by their name, and you can. It, it takes a little practice because instead of saying he, her, they they put it the pencil in the thing. You say Becky, put the pencil in the thing. Nice to meet you, Becky. You know, and that is that's as far as I'm willing to go because the moment we capitulate with these exactly. lies, the moment we're participating, we're enabling in in a world of lies, and we don't even uh-huh. realize what we're doing because we think we're being compassionate but we're just helping enable. It's the same way with addiction. You know, if it makes you feel better, let's do it. But they're chopping off the genitals of minors, cutting off their body. They're mutilating them. They're putting them on drugs because they don't know who they are. It's not that they are something that they're not. They're being told you were born in the wrong body. You are not enough. That's where this sick ideology really stems from. And, you know, when they're adults, they can decide what they want to do with their body, right? We have women that get these like giant balloons on their breasts because that's what makes them feel affirmed. You know, when you're an adult, you can make those choices, but man, children can't make those choices. And their their identities are deliberately, intentionally being destabilized in school, in social media. And that is why they're falling prey to this. And these lies that, oh, they're going to kill themselves if we don't give them this care. They're going to kill themselves if your child doesn't use their pronouns. That is really toxic and unhealthy. And that's a lie. And if we don't stand for that, it is only going to be worse. And we're training our kids to participate in the lie then. So I feel really strongly about that. And and I didn't always say or do the right thing either. It took a lot of like really praying and digging deep about this and and nobody wants their kid to be a target, you know, but if we're going to send our kids out in the world, we have to equip them to either stand for truth or not. And and I really like that because that was one of the things like I understood his, his intent. Like, I don't want to, he's not afraid to stand up for what's right and doing whatever, but it's like, I don't want to hurt that person as a person. And so it's like, this is great. I love that there's, thank you for like walking us through that. Cause now I can say to him, just don't use he or she call them by their name. Now, unfortunately the one girl, her name is Isabella and she now goes by Nico. And so her own name isn't even the same name anymore. And that makes Mm -hmm. it even hard. Um, 
but I, I, that's something that I can at least address. And, and I'm sure it's not even something that he deals with on a daily basis. I don't, I'm sure it's not he or she anyway, but that was a really good direction um, that I can give him to go back to school with. Cause I mean, it's again, I, our kids are really in there fighting the fight, but sometimes we just don't know what verbiage to give them to fight better. Right. Right. And it takes so much practice, like car rides of just practicing. Right. And my son's like, oh, really? Again? I'm like, yes, because you are going to be this training. I'm training up little warriors here, yes. you, you know, because when they're in that situation, if they don't have that training, you know, just just like any of us, we're not trained. We don't we, we freeze and we don't know what to do and we succumb to that pressure. Um, right. But if you're if you know what you're going to say and you know why you're saying what it is and you fully stand behind it then you can walk in that authority and, and, it, and people that's, that's a really amazing thing is when we really walk in that authority, people feel it. They don't even, it's not even what's so much what they're hearing. It's, you know, you know, yes. the way that you say their name with love in recognition, yes. it's, it's interesting because that child will probably be feel more affirmed by your child saying their name with yeah. love than somebody using their pronouns that they just came up with, you know? So it's, it's amazing how little things, little acts like that do have an impact. When as parents, and we've mentioned this before, parents have got to start explaining to their teenagers or adolescents that it's okay to feel weird. Everybody yes. has been weird at 13, 14, 15, 16. Nobody knew what the hell they were doing ever. Yes. And we, and if we don't tell them, you know what, you're having a bad day, it's perfectly normal to have a bad day. It's perfectly normal not to know what you want to wear today or eat today or mm -hmm. listen to on the radio or whatever. All of that is perfectly normal. But the problem is they're trying to find perfectly normal in the world. And the world has absolutely, Satan has absolutely latched onto that. You don't feel good? Okay, then I'm going to tell you what to make you feel better. And if you start listening, especially to the transgender, if you start listening to these poor people who followed that path and now regret it, it is heartbreaking. Right. Right. And it's, it, it's not easily undone. You know, the damage is, is really, man, the toll is so we were, my husband and I were listening last night, we're doing a little project with my nonprofit and listening to these doctors, right. That are doing these surgeries um, on accounts that people don't even know about. And they're just going off about this and this and this, and, and it's just, when you, when you hear them talk and then, you know, you, you've seen the image or images of what has been done to these children's bodies and how they, you can't even urinate without pain and all this stuff. And, and you're like, this is not informed consent. You know, it, it's just, it's so disgusting how children are not being given informed consent. Parents are not being given informed consent about what this path looks like what it really entails. It is not rainbows and butterflies and um, it, it's abuse and, and it's, Honestly, it's, it's in some cases on par or worse than, you know, Dr. Mengel experiments in World War II. I mean, it's, if you've seen some of these pictures, I mean, they suppress them, but I really encourage people to look at this, look at what they're doing to the, the bodies of people. Uh, it's, it's pretty uh, brutal. It's, it's awful. Yeah, I've seen some of it and it's, and then hearing the stories alone, but then once like what people don't realize is the long-term effect, especially say if they transition out of that stage in their life and then want to have a family, nobody's yes. thinking about that right now. So you're, right. you're literally taking that away from your child and it's so heartbreaking to see. So I love that you are so vocal about that because most people won't talk about those deep conversations because it is uncomfortable. It is graphic, but it's time for us as a society to learn to be uncomfortable and start protecting the children and really taking a stand. So for those of everyone listening who is just waking up to all this and wanting other ways to get involved, I love what you're doing with your organization. If you can share some ways to get involved as well as your organization information. Uh, we will make sure to link it in the show notes as well for everyone listening, but I would love for Landon to tell you guys. Absolutely. So, well, my nonprofit is freedomforever.us. 
Um, and we're doing some amazing things. And, and we've been blessed that we're growing so quickly as a volunteer uh, based organization. So we do not take sa salaries. Um, we are all volunteer based, but the, the, uh, the challenge here is that we have so many volunteers that we have to process everybody, vet everybody, match everybody with specific um, initiatives, missions that we call them. So that part is taking some time, but I would still encourage people to go if they want to volunteer their time or their skill set. Um, there's ways and specific skills that you can see on our volunteer page if you want to contribute. We welcome that. Just be patient with us. It's taking a little bit of time to go through everyone. Um, but some really exciting initiatives that we're doing, we're building a national database. Um, and so it's very comprehensive and it is all citizen informed data all backed up, but there's just not one place that the average person who says, how do I want to make a difference in my community or my state can go and say Texas and click on Texas and see every piece of legislation that is either helping kids or harming kids and all the gaps, what's needed, what's happening, what abuses are taking place, what survivor resources are needed. Um, and so my, my hope is that this becomes such a, uh, a, 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 helpful hub of information that people all over will use it and that we can keep it updated um, to be really resourceful as possible. Uh, but it is a very big feat, praying for God's help with that and for the right people to step forward so that we can have that because it's, it's you know, what, what this would normally be done millions of dollars, right, with some big corporation who gets federal funding, but we all know the Biden administration isn't going to fund my nonprofit. Um, so we, you know, not nor would I want that federal funding, but typically right. this is how things like this are done. And, and quite frankly, some of the nonprofits or organizations that are claiming to protect children should be doing this, but they don't. So this is where we step in and we fill those gaps. And so it's really all citizens. And that is what's really unique about us is that we involve people. We don't just want your money, which you know we appreciate donations, of course, uh, but we want your involvement. We want people to participate. Uh, and so that's really the crucial work um, uh, that what we do is we're an activism based organization. So we're, we are not just doing awareness, we are mobilizing people, training people um, to get in their communities. You know, things like what's happening with the drag shows for kids um, are exploitive. And if we allow them to continue, um, we will see laws change very quickly. We already don't have law adequate legislation to safeguard children from this. I mean, we literally have children in bars being having money from adult men thrown at them. And that's legal in some cases. We have a lot of work to do. So we need people not just to pray, but get off of their you know hands and actually go do the work of God out in the communities. Um, and, and that's really what I just just stress so much is that we are we are powerful. We have the ability to do this and we have to step away from this fear of, oh, what if Antifa shows up? What if this? What if this? No, we are either called to do the good work or we're not you know, and, and we have to come together and it's so powerful when I've met some of the best friends I've ever, ever met in life that I otherwise would not have just for being in this fight for people that care, that share your, your values. So it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it's, it's, uh, it can even be, you know, very fun and rewarding to, to be able to know that you're uh, doing something really powerful with, with other like minds. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And again, we, we tell our listeners all the time, the idea of you don't have to start a podcast. You don't have to go to Congress. You don't, if that's not that's your right. calling, that's not your calling. And it, it is, but you have to do something. Right. And maybe it's taking our posts that we post and sharing them. Maybe that's, maybe that is a huge thing for you because you would never speak out on something before. And that's a step in your direction. Great, then that's the biggest thing you can do, but that helps everybody. Maybe it's donating. I have money, but I don't have time. Cool, we need that too. And that's where, where we can get, we can help others. Maybe it is volunteering for you and, and coming in and saying, you know what? I have this skill set, and she does have on her page, just so everybody knows, and we will link it below, um, volunteer opportunities for you that, hey, I'm, I think one of them was even like a graphic designer. I'm a graphic designer, would love to help do whatever. Great, put your name in the hat and let's see kind of where that where that goes. But the problem is people don't know where to start, so they don't start. And a lot of times exactly. it, you just have to take the step and maybe it's little. Maybe today it's sharing 
one of our posts on your page and someone goes, well, what is that? You've got to put your ego away and say, someone that I know is not going to like this. Mm-hmm. So what? I lost most of my friends. But like you said, Landon, I've met some of the best people I know in this fight. Strongest, uh, best women, men that are ready to stand up. And that's who I want to link arms with. I don't care anymore. If you don't, if you think I'm crazy, you're probably not meant to be in my circle. That's right. That is absolutely right. I mean, it goes back to the beginning of this conversation, right? Like going through and detoxing our lives is why would we keep people close to us that just tell us good things, but they don't want good for us or the world or, or children? Why would we need that? Where does that come from? You know, and it, it's it's so important to to reevaluate what really is important. What's the point of having values? What's the point of having faith if we're afraid to exercise them? What's the point of having freedom if we're afraid to protest the most basic, you know, exercise of freedom in a free country? If we don't use it, it goes away. If we're too scared, it goes away. These people win. So you're absolutely right. I, that's it, it, it. We have to actually walk our values. Yeah. And if you have a group of people, I know it's really intimidating to stand on a corner and to hold up a sign or to tell people about something. But honestly, like we see on the news and that's why the news is the news. We see all of the bad and it just scares us into submission. Antifa or people, we've we've gone on the corners and we've stood out for human trafficking, for the new school um, choice in Arizona. People don't bother you really more often than not. You might get some snide remark or whatever, but more than likely you will find that people will support whatever you're doing more than they will come and fight you on it. And so they want you to believe that there are people like Antifa running around and going to be all up in your stuff. No, more than likely it's not going to happen. That's so true. That's so true. And two, I just want to say for Arizona, like any way we can help or volunteer, I will gladly volunteer myself because we live in a state that is a hub for human trafficking. And so many people turn a blind eye to it and don't want to believe it's happening no different than all over the world. So however we can help, like gladly, even if it's connecting people, because again, it's going to take all of us to do something and come together to unite to not only protect our children, but like future generations, because right now the world, yes, it, it is dark times, but if we all come together, it will only make the world that much a better place for the children and future generations. 100%. You're so right about that. So one last question I have, speaking of Bridget, Bridget's talking about Arizona and the border, and I know you have visited the border on many times, and we talk about it here. People really do believe, and I don't know everybody, but people believe that it's like a humanitarian thing to allow people to come into our country, and they just want a better world, and they just want to come into our country, and our country is great, don't get me wrong, people should be able to come in here. But people don't understand what's happening at the border. They want to believe that it's people literally just walking across the river and coming in and everything's good. Can you give your perspective, what you've seen, what's really happening at the border? Because I know you've been there and are talking out about that as well. Absolutely. Um, And sorry, I had to backtrack for a second. Bridget, when you were talking, there was a fly, like a, a trying to attack me. And so I was like, yes, okay. I was just trying to get it away. So sorry, keeping it real over here. This is why it was driving me nuts. Um, but yes, I would love, love your help in, in Arizona. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, it, Arizona is going to be a battleground it, it for sure. And I'm going to be there um, with Million Outrage Moms, um, okay. I think in October. Yes. So we would love to, you know, collaborate, bring, you know, bring you guys into that. And um there's yeah, some other initiatives. Yeah, yeah, there's some other initiatives too that you know we're we're still talking. I'm I'm not really coming out yet and saying where we're going to do another initiative to demonstrate against you know the the human trafficking and just exploitation happening as a result of open borders. But yeah, to touch on on that issue, I mean it's it's worse than it's ever been. Um, you know, it's not just it's not just inhumane. I mean, we're talking about a federally funded human trafficking operation 
And what's happening to children, you know, over 200,000 unaccompanied minors are coming into our country, being funneled into the broken foster care system that you guys, I'm sure, have covered a lot on your podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is a very big problem because also they're not vetting these children's uh, placements. They're not doing background checks. They're not doing even the most basic things um, to reunite these children with their families. And in some cases, they've made contact with their families back in Mexico or you know, El Salvador, wherever they're coming from. And instead of reuniting them with their families, which is what should be done, they are then putting a price tag on that child. They make money. There's federal contact contracts all over going out. Then they put them in these detainment centers or these um, you know, group homes, foster care homes in which they're abused. Uh, and that's what's happening here in Tennessee. It's happening in Texas. It's happening all over. Uh, and of course, mainstream media doesn't want to talk about that. Journalists don't really dig very deeply into that. And so that's another utility of my organization is we put in these FOIA requests. We have these independent uh, journalist investigations happening, kind of Project Veritas style, to uncover these things. Uh, and it's an ongoing process, and it's extremely difficult, but, you know, we just keep going. Um, but people need to understand the toll that it's having. You know, our focus is mostly on children, because if we can't help them forget everything else, I mean, it's really that simple if we can't protect children. But children are trafficked every day at our southern border. Um, and so these humanitarian groups, right, that these leftists are sponsoring and and very well funded they go down there they bring food they have a photo op they bring their little celebrities down there and say oh look at the you know these people just want a better life and and what they don't show you is the dead bodies pulled out of the river uh the the cesspool of trash that's left down there um the the rape trees down there the trafficking the organ harvesting all of these things they don't show you that. They just sell a lie, just like Hollywood does. And they bring in their puppets, the celebrities, to put this mass awareness out so that people say, oh, you know, build bridges, not walls, things like that. And they don't know the destruction that they're literally equipping cartels and traffickers. It has never been easier to be a trafficker or a member of cartel. They literally have, um, I mean, they're they're running a war zone. They They have control of our border. And I mean, it's not just a national security crisis, but we are funneling money. We are helping these these criminal organizations and we are turning it into an industry. That's really what's happening here. And the only way to stop it is to actually have strong borders, a strong wall, and then our immigration system can actually get to the asylum seekers. And that's a very big problem is they they conflate true asylum seekers and refugees with everyone. They say everyone, everybody comes in, everybody's an asylum seeker. And that is not a fair system. That is not a just system because there are true asylum cases. There are real refugees and they just get lumped in with, with everyone. And, and here's the other thing people might not be aware of. When they come over, they get like a little luggage tag because it it's it's an operation. You come into our country, everyone knows this because of the, all the reckless rhetoric incentivizing this. And they get a little appear notice and it could be three years from now. And these people don't appear in court. Our system cannot sustain this. This is not going to be something that can be sustained much longer. We're talking about the population of Ireland mm -hmm. <laughs> coming into our country illegally. It's only going to grow. And, and forget about free and fair elections. Forget about a, a, you know economic system uh, stabilizing ever. And, and forget about you know the resources. Not what happens to the foster kids. What happens right. to them? They get pushed back because now we're getting ads on Instagram to, you know, rescue a uh, child, the, the unaccompanied minor crossing the border. And doesn't that just pull the heartstrings of the liberal American woman? You know, yeah. this is the lies that are being sold and the children, the American children are suffering and not that's not even touching on the fentanyl crisis of how many right. children could fill a stadium that have been killed. You know, yeah. so we, we really have to like, put it bluntly out there. This is a human trafficking operation. This is a cr criminal organiz organization complicit with the United States involved. Uh, and something of that epic proportions needs a giant movement. And that's what, something that we're working on growing is our, our movement to stand up against this and to effectively have an ask of our politicians, more of a demand, not an ask uh, yeah, of what- <laughs> yeah, we're done asking. That's right. Of what what needs to change? Because this is the thing. These politicians had the power all along to secure our border, even just on their own. And the state citizens would have supported it in Texas and Arizona. And they didn't do it. You know, so these people have to be 
persuaded, pushed, pressured into doing the right thing. And that requires grassroots mobilization. It, it requires mass organizing and, and things like what we did with March to the Border. It, it was the largest coalition down there. Um, so we have to keep growing that and, and, and telling people the truth and putting together, you know, um, little mini documentaries to show the truth because yeah. all they're getting is the celebrities passing out meals at the border thinking that that's humanitarian, you know, aid and it's not. Absolutely. And to put it in perspective for those listening, especially our state, like we talk about the border topic, the border crisis all the time on our podcast. I would suggest you go back and listen to the specific podcast on the border with Yako Boyens, Sheriff Lamb, and Jorge Ventura, who are on the border, boots on the ground. And as Landon's talking about fentanyl, Arizona is fluctuated with fentanyl. And with that and putting it in perspective, our border right now is being, don't even get me started with our governor, is being held together by shipping containers, shipping containers <laughs> which other, there other people use shipping containers to traffic children. So our border currently spent so much money on these shipping containers just for them to be knocked down by the cartel within a day. Didn't even make it 24 hours. It's a joke. But putting that in perspective is the fentanyl. What people do not realize when Landon is talking about the rape trees and the truth of the border and the fentanyl crisis, there are babies coming across our border that are literally dead, split, cut open, dead. Fentanyl is being stuffed into that baby. And we talk about it. We've been talking about it for years on our podcast, but people are stuffing fentanyl in the babies and they are being carried over wrapped in a blanket and carried with a mother who's already been sold into drug trafficking human trafficking and the fentanyl is coming across the border through a dead baby so just to put that in perspective that is what is happening on the arizona border as we speak in broad daylight because the cartel Nobody is cares. at the border. Nobody cares. We have border patrol right there. They're getting shot at, literally. Like there is yeah. footage from Jorge being shot at and they he was offered a child while covering it on the border in Arizona. So just putting that in perspective. So thank you for touching on that. And people really just, I would pray and hope that people do the research and turn off the mainstream media and start supporting independent journalists and organizations who are actually sharing the truth and on the front lines because once people realize what's truly happening they will get involved and join the fight for the right reasons and realize it it doesn't matter if you're democrat republican the child it's a human it's, it's yes. a human. the child Think about the children and innocent souls being sold and murdered, sacrificed on a daily basis, including the rape trees. Like they're being raped multiple times a day, all day long. And it's not just a teenager. They are starting with babies That's and right. children. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the demand for children is greater than it's ever been in the United States. Um, and there's no oversight. How can you find a child that you don't even know is missing, that you don't even have their name? Nobody, yep. nobody stopped it. Nobody knew it happened. They came through. Um, and the Biden administration has lost track of over a third of these children. So where are they? And who's looking into that? These are the questions that, that we pursue and that we advocate for and, you know, strive to get to the bottom of and, and to mobilize people to that actionable step of what we can do. Um, that's really what my whole focus is, is you know, some people can't, can't hear it. They can't hear what happens to the children. They tune out. It's just too difficult. So, you know, I, I invite them just to fast forward then and just go to the action, you know, just help us just, just get on board, support people that are on the front lines doing, doing this important work. Absolutely. And going into wrap up, if you can share your social media handles, as well as if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Oh, okay. So my, my social handle is Landon Starbuck on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, and um, freedomforever.us is my nonprofit. 
Um, okay, 30 seconds. That's hard because I, I go on these long tangents as you guys have probably realized. Um, well, I would, I would say that we yeah, are we powerful. Yeah, we're, we're powerful. We've been convinced that we're not and we've been black pilled in many, in many ways, uh, to be, you know, this, this is how it is. This is, these people are all powerful. There's nothing you can do. Um, and that is the greatest lie because once we realize how powerful we are, we start realizing we do have the energy resources and ability to stop the most evil things happening on earth. Um, and ultimately we're in an identity crisis too. It's not just our children. And we have to step into that full authority of, of our, of the truth that we know. The one truth is that we come from God and that we have power and dominion on this planet if we walk in that truth and if we defend that truth. And so it's very important. This is a spiritual battle. This is not just a physical activism uh, battle for good and bad. It, it really is evil and, um, and, and, and good and God and truth. And for people that don't believe, go look at how evil the depths of this depravity is. The fact that we have children that are sold, millions of them online, that people are viewing this. The darker that you see will bring you closer to God because you don't know that the devil is real. I didn't know the devil was real. And when you realize that he is real, you will run so far away from him to the truth. And that's when you will really understand the truth of God, how much he loves you and how much power he has placed in you on this earth to do this important work while we're here. And we don't know how long we're here. It could be a week, it could be a month. And if we're afraid of what our neighbor will think, or we're afraid of doing the right thing, then we're not living our purpose. So we have to walk in that authority, in that truth, in that purpose, chase truth, and you will discover why you're here. And so we have to, we have to, you know, we have to be willing to do that. And that starts with that little fire of wanting to know more and, and hunting down that truth. So I hope that that was 30 seconds. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much again for uh, joining us on our podcast today. We are honored to have you. Thank you for all that you do and spreading awareness, boots on the ground, your organization, all in and anything we can do to help we're here to support and share any way we can so again thank you we appreciate you thank you both so much for having me on of course anytime change begins with awareness when does it stop when each and every single one of us have the courage to stop looking away and stop turning a blind eye to it you don't get a look away on this issue human trafficking is a 150 billion dollar industry we have no future if we don't protect our children. We have a duty to protect the innocent. If we don't, that blood is on our hands. Everyone has a story. Together, we must rise for the children and for humanity. It starts with one person. It starts with you. We all have a story. You're not alone. Be bold. Be you. Be your own kind of beautiful. Stand tall. Speak your truth. And the world will adjust. They cannot take your voice. It's never too late to do what's right. Survivors. You are not alone. We hear you. We see you. We stand by you, sending you love, light, blessings, and prayers. We will be the generation to end human trafficking. Enough is enough. Love, Landon, and Save Our Children podcast. Oh, I love that.